make a brief opening statement, and then we'll take some questions. Good to see everybody. Um, you know, first and foremost, I want to begin by saying that um, our thoughts and prayers, a uh, ton of care and concern with the folks, the communities in the surrounding areas uh, in southwest Virginia, the Carolinas, East Tennessee. Anybody that's watched the video, uh, it's very moving. Uh, the damage, the loss, um, the rebuild, the cleanup, just uh, it's horrendous. We've got players, families affected by this. We've got staff, families, and certainly uh, plenty of Hokie faithful. So a ton of uh, just puts things into perspective. And uh, so I want to start by saying that. Uh, as far as the call at the end of the game on Friday night, I received no explanation on the field, no explanation in the locker room. The first thing I heard was what the general public heard at 1.30 that night, a statement that to me was uh, confusing at best. <clears throat> I was finally contacted Monday morning, which was a solicited contact by the head of officials for the ACC. I asked for an explanation and the video that they viewed that merited overturning the call with indisputable evidence. The explanation was there was a loose ball that was touched by a Miami defender who was out of bounds. The video showed nothing new, nothing that none of us hadn't seen already. The words used with me were interpretation and hard to find which to me, neither one aligns with indisputable. I watched the video that they watched. If it was ruled a catch, I don't see how you, end it. you, you overturn it. There's no evidence. If it was ruled not a catch, I don't see how you overturn it. You can't see enough to tell you know, that's, that's my take on it. I feel for our players, our fans. Um, but we've turned the page. We turned the page Sunday evening uh, in an aggressive manner with our players, with our staff, with our media, with our player parents, with our own wives, with everybody. Um, so respectfully, I'm not going to discuss the last play any further. I'm not going to discuss the officiating, and I've asked our players not to discuss it either. Our focus and attention is on a really good Stanford team um, that went to Syracuse and, and beat an upstart Syracuse team. Uh, they're well coached, a highly successful FCS coach. Um, they play very hard as hard as anybody will see on our schedule. Uh, innovative offense, aggressive on defense. And, uh, you know, it's another unique week for us. Shortened week to a degree, much like last week. We're leaving Thursday, uh, which kind of, um, you know, puts a, some extra work on a lot of people and uh, some, um, some extra planning. So I'll take some questions at this time. Not specifically about the call, but about the, the, the ACC review process and even getting in consultation with them. Does that need to be more transparent, in your opinion, or, or more yes. easily accessible after the game? Yes. Is that something you'll raise at any future yes. conferences? You, you said you aggressively turned the page to Stanford. How do you do that? What does what an aggressive turning to the page look like? Yeah, it, it's really shutting the door. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. When somebody asks you about it, you, you turn the attention to Stanford. Ask me a question about Stanford. We sent all of our player parents a message Sunday evening asking them to join us in doing that. Um, when speaking with your sons, as, as tempting as it is, talk about Stanford. Um, you know, we 
we've had that message with, with Travis and our media representatives, uh, with the staff, with our families. Um, you know, we've got our hands full with Stanford on the road, and all of our attention needs to be there um, you know, to make the improvements we need to make, uh, to play with the same intensity that we played with Friday night. Uh, we've got to pour everything into Stanford. Brent, how's the team's mindset set you turn the page aggressively to Stanford? Yeah, they're excited. Uh, they are, um, you know, they're, I think they're, they're excited about the improvements in the way we played uh, at Miami, uh, giving us a chance to beat a highly ranked team on the road. Uh, they're also disappointed, which leads to motivation. And uh, I think this group still has a lot to prove. They feel that way. I feel that way. And uh, we have another opportunity, you know, on Saturday against a good football team on the road. Is the, is the emphasis on turning the page aggressively, making sure the loss Friday doesn't turn into a loss Saturday by dwelling too much on it and focus on channeling whatever energy they had into focusing on getting better and being prepared for Stanford? Correct. I know there's a lot of people that are going to ask our players uh, throughout this week when they hit campus yesterday, today, about the Miami game, and I want them, uh, I want them thinking and and um, you know their focus on Stanford, and um, so I think uh, I think they're doing that. I think they believed in the message, and um, you know they're pouring it into this week's preparation. What was your evaluation of how Kyron played on Saturday? It felt like he was really in his element, and he had that. Uh, the, the touchdown to Aiden, where he kind of scrambled and, and threw and, and, and made a play downfield. What did you think of just the way he played for 60 minutes on Saturday? Yeah, I certainly Friday. thought uh, he looked much like the Kyron that we all know and, uh, you know, love to watch play. You know, I thought our offense went the way he went and certainly the way Bashaw went. But, uh, you know, there's, some, there's certainly some throws Kyron would like to have back. And so there's room for improvement there, of course. But uh, the scramble ability, the tough runs, the block on Jay Lane's uh, touchdown run, just so many things, you know, um, that demonstrate how hard he plays and how important it is to him and how talented he is. Uh, so I thought it was a big step in the right direction for KD. You guys won the turnover battle. I know that's something, I know that's something you, you – it's a goal every single week you set out to do. Were you pleased with – the disruptive nature of how you guys played defensively? I think the disruption was there. The sacks, some TFLs, the takeaways. thought we played physical. I thought we played very hard against a really good group. We still gave up too many explosive plays. Um, you know, if, if we could get one or two of those back, I think it could make the difference. If you can win the explosive play battle and the turnover battle, you're going to win the game. 95% of the time. And, um, you know, we had too many missed tackles, um, not to take away from the Miami skill, but uh, too many missed tackles that, uh, you know, were opportunities for us to, to be, you know, drive stoppers or certainly minimize explosives. Coach, you mentioned uh, Stanford's defensive front and how they get after it. This is a group that is tops in the ACC in rushing yards allowed per game. What's the key to breaking through on the line of scrimmage and making sure you guys are able to establish the run on Saturday? Yeah, first of all, on Stanford, uh, they're, they're seniors and grad students. I mean, they're a veteran group, smart, uh, almost throughout their entire defense. And, um, you know, they play very physical. They're very sound. They do do some interesting things. Uh, they're not just a vanilla group, but they do it well. Um, you know, we have to continue to improve in our line play, which I think we've done that for a couple of weeks here. We're straining. Our hats are in the right place. We're finishing blocks better. We're giving Bashaw, KD, more opportunity, PJ, more opportunity to get a good run started. Um, so we have to continue to do that. I think uh, – you know, take another, to take another step with our offensive line play. And let me say this, the tight ends have been a big piece of that. You know, Benji and, and Harry and their ability to, to get hat on hat and, um, you know, help us create some scenes. So the improvement there is going to be really important. On, on the other side, they've got a wide receiver who's a 
all American NFL type, you know, matchup nightmare. How are Dorian and Mansoor and the defensive backs kind of approaching that level of challenge and how important is winning that matchup? Yeah, again, I think your comments on their wide receiver, he's big, he's talented, he can run. Uh, he is an NFL type receiver. You know, we just came off a game playing some really talented guys. Uh, this guy's skill set is a little bit different, but uh, you know we'll have our hands full with him. We'll have to have a good plan uh, defensively, and those guys, Monsoor, Dorian, and even the safeties at time, at times, will have to play very well. It, it looked on that uh, first field goal you guys kicked that you guys got away with the double numbers situation again. Uh, after all the, the fuss that was made after the first game, how does that happen again and slip through the cracks? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, first of all, as I mentioned in week one, that call's missed as much as it's called. And uh, clearly the crew missed some calls in the game. Um, and that was one of them. You know, we were fortunate. We had a player come off the field that should have gone on the field for field goal. Um, miscommunication. He was under the impression we were going to punt. Uh, once we realized we had 10 out, I turned to grab the first trustworthy big body I could find to plug a hole on the front. We don't have a timeout available. If we line up and kick the field goal, it's probably blocked uh, with the position that would have been missing. You take the delay a game, you're going to punt. Uh, you run somebody out, they get you for a double number, you're going to take the five, you're going to punt. Uh, so there really was nothing to lose at that point. Uh, the hope was they don't, they didn't see it, that they won't see it, and they didn't. And uh, we ran Cole Nelson out there, trusty guy with some size and some strength, and he did a nice job. And we made the kick, and uh, you know they missed the call. I think of the guys that had to come out of the game. Braylon Moore was one who didn't go back in. Uh, how severe was what he went down with in the game? And you expect him this week at all? Yeah, first of all, he's a, one of our tougher players, and um, he tried to go. You know, they took him in the locker room, checked him out, taped him up, braced him up. And, uh, you know, I knew when I saw him limping around that, um, you know, we weren't going to get him back. You know, kudos to his brother stepping over to the center spot. Didn't miss a beat. And then, you know, especially Brody Meadows stepping up and having to play a ton of snaps against a really talented group. And, um, you know, so I thought they did a really nice job, um, you know, making up for losing Braylon. Uh, he'll be a day-to-day -day guy. I know that if, if, if we can get some snaps out of him, he'll do it. As I mentioned, he's, he's mentally and physically very tough, and he's a good athlete. He's one of those guys that he may not, you know, he may not be 100%, but is it good enough to get some good football out of him? Um, you know, that's something we'll have to evaluate as we get closer to Saturday. Let's go, Damien, and then Nell. Speaking of the offensive line depth, uh, is there an update on Lath? We notice he's not on the two deep. Is that something that you guys are monitoring on a week-to-week -week basis? Yeah, more than likely he won't make the trip. Uh, we've gotten some good news as we move forward, and hopefully that continues and we'll get him back, back in the fold. And you, we've sp spoken about depth on the offensive line quite a bit. The fact that Brody has been developed to come in and play like that, especially playing last year every snap against Pitt, every snap after you know, second quarter against Miami. How good is it that you have that depth there, and how much is that depth being tested now because Braylon might not be 100% lathes out and uh, you know, still trying to develop the tackle depth behind your starters? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, we're fortunate that we were able to play Brody a bunch last year. You know, he's got some experience under his belt, and he has to step into a giant role against Miami and played well. Um, you know, Johnny Garrett played three series uh, in the ball game Friday night, uh, which helps those guys certainly. And, uh, you know, now if Braylon's unavailable, you know, and with Lath unavailable, you've got opportunities for guys like Gunnar Givens, Montavious Cunningham. Those guys have to be on the ready because they're one play away from playing, you know, significant snaps. Um, so that's, that's what we're working on right now, making sure that next group is, is ready to go. Coach, uh, Aiden Green, three receptions, 33 yards, and a touchdown, obviously the big one in the fourth quarter. How have you and Coach Mines seen Green develop to this point as a true sophomore and kind of find his role in this offense week by week? Yeah, you know, he really flourished in the spring. Uh, 
the maturity, the work ethic. He's, he's talented, and we knew that, but he matured quickly and uh, you know, worked his tail off and learned the system, improved on technique. Uh, I think he's just kind of hitting his stride. He had two different minor injuries throughout preseason camp that kind of kept him from, I think, starting the season that way. But he did a great job coming back for that ball and uh, you know, made another nice catch and turned it up for some extra yardage. But um, you know, his, his role needs to grow. His playmaking ability is very valuable. I think he's got good speed. He's got good ball skills. Uh, he's a competitor. So I'm excited about what he can do for us the rest of the season. And with the game being in California this Saturday, how are you adjusting the team to the time change, long travel? Is there anything you guys are doing specifically in practice to get your players ready for such a unique game in the ACC? Yeah, I mean, we're going to practice early Thursday and then and get our group out there. And uh, we've got a good plan for Friday. We've got a good plan for the plane trip itself. Um, you know, we've uh, we've invested in a larger plane with better seating for the guys. Um, you know, our captains, our O line, our D line. We want them as comfortable as we can. You know, we've got a plan for hydration on the plane, for stretching on the plane, for the amount of sleep we'd like for them to get on the plane, um, and then certainly when we get to the hotel. When we wake up Friday, it's our Friday. It's our Friday routine. Uh, that's the goal. We've talked uh, last week. You were talking about how offensively, staying ahead of the, the stick, staying ahead of the chains, being in comfortable positions, kind of helps you guys lead to success. You guys were nine of fourteen on on third downs. Did you like the situations you guys put yourself in offensively on Friday night? We certainly did. You know, we were able to stay on schedule more often, and it was it was uh, really impactful and in the game. I think uh, you know the commitment to Bayshaw, to KD, to running the ball. Uh, the way the line was able to play and give us a chance um, is invaluable, manageable third downs. But uh, I think also just, you know, being able and accepting when the first down run play, you only gain two yards. You know, hey, it's okay. Let's line up. It's second and eight. Let's go get, you know, four or five here. Um, you know, it's what, what we couldn't have happened was the minus yardage plays that get you behind. I mean, and I think there's a there's a real difference there, and uh, I think we felt that on Friday night. You know, we had some second and eights, and uh, you know we were able to to get a decent chunk on second down and, and get into a manageable third. You know, we had very few minus yardage plays that uh, that got us behind. John Love, ACC Specialist of the Week, he's made 23 of his last 24, uh, and knocks through two 50 yarders. What has impressed you the most about his consistency and uh, you know? Did either of those kicks he made on Friday night surprise you at all? Well, I'm going to be honest. He's been nursing a groin injury. And, um, you know, so I, I guess maybe we got to stop treatment and make sure he keeps nursing it. But he uh, – we kind of called on Kyle and pulled him up to the huddle for that field goal. And John just looked at us like, are you crazy? Like, I want to kick this. And he deserves the opportunity. <laughs> He was very confident in it. He told me pregame, Coach, I feel great, uh, which which made me feel better. Uh, but then the look in his eye and you know, you know, wanting to do it, um, we went with John and proved to be the right choice. Not that Kyle couldn't have made it. Uh, he's 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 made some kicks from that distance as well. But uh, John's leg has gotten significantly stronger from last year. Now, he had a good off season, and. Uh, you know, so he's, you know, certainly there's a lot of confidence with our place kicker right now. Let's go to Zoom for a couple. On Zoom, please use the raise hand feature to ask questions for Coach Fry. Please also state your name and outlet before your question. We'll open it to questions. We'll start with Steve, please. Hi, Brent. Uh, Steve Hempel, Virginia Pilot. Uh, what? With the this is your first uh, delving with the with an ex, with a team that's ex, expanded into the conference. Do, what kind of advantages do you sir? What kind of things pauses are you taking into the to this road trip? Uh, having a, having to play at California schools that help with any kind of recruiting, or is it something the players are excited about? No, you know I we don't recruit California, but uh, 
you know, for our players, it's an opportunity to go to the West Coast to play a traditionally strong program uh, in Stanford, obviously one of the more highly talented academic schools in our country. Um, you know, it's something new, which generally is exciting for these guys. Um, you know, so it's just been a lot of planning. And, um, you know, we've got some curveballs that, that, that these guys are going to have to hit the next couple of days to make sure we're, you know, we're, we're able to play at the level we need to play at. So there's certainly challenges that are presented, but uh, it's an opportunity to go play a uh, quality program that's well coached. When you add three schools to the conference as a coach, does it, does this add time to you in off season or anything as far as scouting or anything like that? Or did, did you have to make any adjustments knowing that you're in an even bigger conference now? Yeah, that's a good question. Absolutely. Uh, you like familiarity as a coach. You like seeing the same team year after year. You get used to their style, their schemes, their play callers. You know, you're going to put a lot of credence in the previous year's game, even two years. And with Stanford and, and these guys, you know, it's all new. And, uh, you know, the tempo of things, the nature of the play calling, it's all new. The stadium itself, um, you know, so, yeah, it, it does present challenges. And you tackle those in the offseason, you're correct. You spend a little extra time on those teams that you're not familiar with. Thank you. Any final questions for Coach Pry on Zoom? Okay, Travis. Not to belabor the point on the, the Miami ending, but uh, you know, it sounds like you have a problem with the replay process. Do you believe it was a completed catch on the field? No, not from the video I've seen. So it's, your issue is more I'm with sorry. the sorry. Yeah. No, I, it's a completed catch. Okay. It, it's called a catch, and the video says nothing different. Um, if it was called incomplete, the video says nothing different. Uh, you know, we don't have the advantage of those officials that went running to the pile. Uh, and call it a catch and call it a touchdown. Uh, that was the sequence. Uh, then loose ball, touched out of bounds. That's the sequence. So, you know, again, like I said after the game, you know, I, I hoped that uh, they got it right. And you know, I can't stand here and say that they did. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, everybody.